Holly. Uh, we'll get to the fight in a second, but I think first a bit of business. It's reported that you signed a new contract ahead of this fight for six fights. Is that right? Yeah, you know, uh, I guess after my last fight, I wasn't really sure. I was hopeful that we could still come to agreement and be able to continue my career with the UFC. And so I'm very, very happy to be able to have that contract signed. Um, my mind, of course, is just set on this fight ahead of me, but I'm happy to continue uh, my journey with the UFC. Nice. I would say with six fights, it's fair to say that boxing is probably just off the table and we'll be <laughs> focusing on MMA for the rest of the career. That's, I would say that's it. Um, I mean, we kind of talked about if something like that came up, you know, um, if we could ever figure something out. I don't know. But my mind's set on MMA right now. Cool. So with that said, what are the long-term goals? Is it still title aspirations? you still want to get back up there and, and win a gold again? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the only thing you need to be focused on if you're in this game. If you don't want to be the champion, what are you doing here, you know? Uh, it's a scary kind of path to really take because you know that that means you have to take the toughest fights, the biggest fights, and you have to be successful. Um, and that's where all that pressure kind of com comes in on you. But um, if I'm going to be here, I want to I do it all the way. Do you ever sit and think to yourself, like, this is the path to the title, or do you try and stay focusing on one fight at a time, this is the person, I'll beat them, and then we'll look forward? One fight at a time, for sure, is my mindset because... You know, that's, your only, that's the only fight you're promised right now. Yeah. And who knows what's going to happen. Maybe there's going to be injuries. Maybe there's going to be something that's career-ending. You never know. Tomorrow's not promised. And uh, so I try to stay just one fight. And I also think it's, it's better for me to stay focused that way. Um, because if you win this fight, that's what opens the door to the next fight. So, right. so with that said, this fight, where are her strengths compared to your strengths? How do you beat her on Saturday? She's, she's a big 135er like me, you know. She's, I think she might even be an inch taller than me. She's strong. Uh, she's got a gas tank on her. Uh, I used to train with her. She trains hard. She's, uh, she's kind of unpredictable, you know. She's, uh, you get in the clinch, she might kind of, you know, surprise you with some things uh, on her feet. She's definitely, she throws, you know, bunches of punches. Um, so and there's a lot of strengths that she has. Uh, I feel that I'm going to edge out everywhere but uh, I'm not overlooking her at all. When it comes to training together I mean I don't know if the media always try and put too much on that but for you personally do you sort of remember things that oh yeah I remember that she did that or she has that tendency or do you just sort of think there's no point even thinking about that the climate of a fight is so different in training there's no point to compare. I feel like she's improved a lot um, since I've trained with her so I'm not putting too much on that. I do think that each fighter has their own style and there's something about that that kind of that's what makes them the type of fighter they are and, they, and there, there'll be certain things that they always have tendencies for good and bad um, so yeah we take a little bit from that from the fact that we trained together before and I know she's doing the same with me she's felt you know my strengths and weaknesses um, but uh, we both respect each other there's no no hard feelings I think we're I know she, uh, trust me even when we trained we we sparred hard, so I know she's coming hard. I'm not looking past her at all. How cool is it to see John Jones come back and perform in that manner? I think there's a, uh, very few people in this sport that can really make waves like that. You know, um, you really can't deny that he's just his fighting style is just something that's uh, he's got he's got that uh, that ability to go in there and just win. You know, it's, he's a very, very talented fighter. So um, any kind of sport I look at, even something like I'm not even, you know, a Buccaneer fan or a Patriot fan, but I'm still a fan of Tom Brady because he goes in there and he just he likes to win. Um, and there's you're not going to see another quarterback with seven Super Bowls anytime soon, right? And I think that that's kind of a similar um, just feeling any kind of sport. Uh, LeBron James just, you know, passing records. And then there's this debate of who's the greatest, but – Despite of who's the greatest and all that, there's just there's times in, in careers where there's a champion that stands out and there's greatness that stands out. So um, I think anybody can look at John's career and admire that he, he gets in there and he knows how to win. Holly, by signing uh, a six fight deal with the UFC, do, do you are you do you plan on fighting all six fights or what, what do you envision for your career? Uh, I just take one fight at a time. I'm, I'm glad to have the six fights there. Um, in my mind, I want to stay young forever and fight forever, so we'll see what happens. Yeah.
So, and I'm not trying to like push into retirement or anything, but like, ha have you thought about that? What it, what it would look like and more or less what, what you have in mind for it? I think, um, you know, my last few years have been pretty slow pace of fights and that due to being health and injuries and things like that. So of course that's gonna be something that's, you know, that's like that, those demons you fight in your own mind. Um, those negative thoughts of man, is this really it? Is it going to be, you know, how many more can my body really take? And then, and then you get through it and then you feel healthy and everything right now, I'm perfectly healthy. And a lot of the things that I was having problems for, even leading up to my last fight are, are fixed now. And I, and I, I feel a lot better. So it's, you know, um, I just had to change my mindset. You know, I, I went 10 years of boxing and then 10 years of MMA and you know, a lot of people were wondering if I should retire when I even started MMA, and I'm sure I didn't, I'm sure glad I didn't listen to everyone else because I had a whole career in MMA that's, you know, it's I can't even explain how amazing uh, I it is and how blessed I feel to have this journey. So I just got to you know look at myself, and I, I know I'm still capable, and I know I still want to fight, and I know I'm still passionate, and so I'm just going to keep going forward. Yeah. Within this six fight deal, are you just gonna take it like fight by fight basis and see how you go, or do you are you like set out to make like another title run and, and become champion once again? I take fight by fight, but with that with the title run being my goal, you know, I, I feel going for the gold is always any fighter's. That's that's that should be one hundred percent on every fighter's mind. You know, I don't want to just be there to kind of participate and be you know, in the shadows of the big, the big championship fights. I, I want to be, I want to be the champion. Yeah. And within this six fight deal, um, is, is it, does that mean like in the boxing world, you are retired? Like, is, have we seen the last of you in, in boxing? I don't know. Wait and see. <laughs> yeah. Every yeah. year, is, every year is a new year. <laughs> we have seen some UFC fighters like box, you know, be allowed to box. Is that something yeah. you've even... I guess you never know. I guess if the, if that bridge comes, we can talk and, and, and see what happens. You know, we'll just see. Um, there have been times where the promotions have crossed, so yeah. I'm not going to say that it's impossible. But right now, um, my focus is on MMA, but that doesn't mean that there may not be, you know, something else out there. Yeah. So. By the way, uh, Boxing Hall of Fame, that's pretty nice. Um, your reaction <laughs> to being inducted into the Boxing Hall of Fame? Uh, just really humbled and honored um, to be able to be considered amongst the greatest of, you know, all the male and female. It's not just like a female boxing hall of fame. This is like, this is the hall of fame of boxing. And yeah. to be considered with the greats that you looked up to and that you admired in these household names is, um, it's very uh, surreal and really different too from still fighting. I don't really know a lot of fighters that are still fighting that have been inducted and, but they're still fighting. So sometimes I always have to like make sure that my mindset's still on achieving, not like, oh, that was awesome. I achieved this. Like I'm still trying to work for something new, something one more. Um, but it also gives me motivation. I mean, now I'm still being able to fight in MMA. It'd be awesome if I could be in the Hall of Fame, you know, on this sport too and be the first to ever do that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and last question, we saw Amanda Nunes is still a champion, but what, a year ago, two years ago, she lost to uh, Juliana Pena. A lot of people didn't see that coming. I was wondering, do you think that was just kind of like a, a fluke, a flash in the pan, or did you see something in that fight that makes you think, okay, um, maybe th there's something new that's exposed or, or something? There's very few fights that I think are flukes. Um, very few. There are some that it's like, man, you've, I've even seen some heavyweights that are just, you know, one gets knocked down, the other one gets knocked down, and then it could be, the next punch could be it, right? Um, I think that it wasn't a fluke uh, that Pena won. I think maybe Nunez didn't expect a few things that caught her off guard, and to me that's not a fluke. Um, but I do think Amanda was the better fighter, and she came back, and, and if you watch her second performance, she actually changed game plan. She stood lefty took away some of the things that was a threat from Pena. So to me, it wasn't a fluke, but um, you know, Pena's a scrapper. And as much as she won with the submission, I mean, if anybody watched that fight, it started with jabs and it, and it had Nunez 
dropped. And that's just kind of a factual thing. There's no, I'm not favoring one or the other fighter at all. Um, and I think the second fight, Nunez turning to a Southie took away some of that, those kind of, the angles that Pena had. So um, I don't think it was a fluke that Pena won. I think that she won fair and square. I think she caught Nunez off guard. Nunez may have, who knows what's going on? We don't know what's going on inside or outside of the, the, the with any fight. So, um, but maybe, maybe Nunez was worried about Pena's scrambles because that's what everybody worries about with Pena is her scrambles. She's scrappy, she'll get you in the clinch and she'll get tied up with you and you get in scrambles. And maybe she was focused on that, not expecting these jabs to come through and catch her off guard. So to me, I don't think it's a fluke, but I definitely think that maybe she caught Nunez off guard and Nunez adjusted, came back and did what she needed to do. Thank you. Holly, uh, kind of piggybacking on what was already said, you know, <coughs> You're not necessarily thinking about retirement or anything, but is there anything you believe you have left to prove uh, come Saturday night? I feel like I want to prove that I'm still getting better and not on the decline, but I'm still on my way up. I think that I think that's where I'm at for not just for everybody else, for myself as well. You know, I've had a lot of humps in the road that easily could have set me back and just been like, it's easier to accept that and retire. Um, so my goal is to come in and show that I'm still a threat and uh, that I'm still a threat and that I'm still, you know, somebody to fear. And like I said, not just for everyone else, but for myself, I want to go in there and I want to show these girls that I'm still very capable and uh, ready to rock and roll. Thank you. Hi, Holly. Uh, Texas is known for its interesting, interesting judging. Uh, does that, does knowing that push you to get the finish on Saturday? I just I, I wanna I wanna get a victory, whatever I have to do. I just wanna do whatever I need to do, and I definitely wanna make it um, clear. But I don't wanna get so anxious that I run into something, you know, stupid. I wanna stay focused, but I definitely wanna make make a point and make a statement. Uh -huh. And uh, you know, a few weeks ago, was this fight or before Sanhagen and Vera was announced? Were you thinking that this fight was going to be the main event, or like, was there any discussions of you headlining UFC San Antonio? You know, when they first announced, uh, you know, the fight with Yana and I, they didn't really say if it was, you know, who was the main event. But I thought it could be possible. Uh, you never know. Um, and I kind of just keep training no matter what. I don't like to really take too much time off in between fights anyway. Um, I figured three or five rounds, her and I both have gone both. You know, she's gone five rounds plenty. Uh, I know that she's going to be ready regardless. Um, so I figured whatever it is. And then when they announced who the, the main event was, I was like, oh, I'm excited to fight with the, with the, with those guys. That's, that's going to be an entertaining fight. Uh, is there any sparring partners that you'd like to shout out from your uh, last fight camp? Gosh, you know, my whole girls team is really great. I, I, um, I work a lot with them on certain days, and my, my other my other days are, you know, I, I kind of mix it up um, with the guys as well. And some of the guys that have had their fights coming up that still come in uh, to help drill with me and spar with me. Um, Steve Garcia, he's got a fight coming up in April. Uh, Chris Brown, he was had a fight with uh, PFL, but they pulled it. And um, just, gosh, I mean, I really could go through the whole the whole team, and even drilling with Michelle Watterson. You know, she's got speed and and uh, movement, uh, not that she's one of my main sparring partners, but um, there's just, uh, our girls team's actually, they're, they're really great. And, um, and the guys work, work with me really well too. You know, they don't take it too easy, but obviously they're not, they're not out there trying to hurt me either. So um, I'm really thankful for my whole team. Uh, like I said, I could probably keep going through a whole list. Awesome, thank you. Uh, you you kind of laid out an interesting dynamic of, you know, still, you know, obviously being inducted into the Hall of Fame, but still trying to get better, still working on things. Is there other specific parts of your game that you see that you would want to improve on that you, you see taking you to that next level? I mean, I'm still trying to get a better jab, you know. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't matter how many years I've been doing it, I still feel like it could be better, it could be faster, it could be cleaner, it could be, you know, more utilized. So, I mean, I kind of take that with everything. I want to learn more and I want to, you know, I want to keep speed, but I want to, add power and I want to, you know, add diversity to where I'm not always throwing the same, the same combos or the same look. Um, 
So I'm, I'm constantly trying to better myself all the time. And then, uh, uh, you know, obviously uh, Sandhagen and uh, Vera, the co-main event. But, you know, obviously I think a lot of people are still coming out to see you and see you fight. What is that like, you know, you know knowing that here in San Antonio we don't get a lot of UFC fights? Um, is there something you just want to show on Saturday night? I've had, I've had uh, good fights in Texas so far. I haven't fought since in LFA, but I've got a couple of knockouts here, so my plan is to, to, to get a good win again. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm searching for a knockout because I want to be prepared for three rounds of war just in case. But uh, I've always had a good, uh, a good homecoming here in Texas, and, um, you know, this is right across the, the border for me from New Mexico, so... Was just about to ask anything to say to people from 505, maybe tuning in watching. <laughs> uh, man, New Mexico is definitely hands down the best fans of any state around. You know, we we're, we have fighters in our state that are just our state is a fighting state, absolutely, and um, our fans are they're solid. They're they're good, loyal fans, and uh, couldn't couldn't be here without them.